A few weeks ago, I tested AOC's AG275QX, a 1440p, 170Hz IPS gaming monitor that, as long as the price is right, is a pretty good shout. So you might be wondering, what's it doing back here on my desk? Well, this isn't actually an AG275QX, it's an AG275QXN. Big deal, I know. The difference here is that uh, this uses a different panel. Instead of using an IPS panel capable of running 170 hertz, this is actually a VA or vertical alignment panel that runs 165 hertz instead. Seeing as these two are so similar, I thought that this would be a good chance to compare sort of side by side the difference between the two and talk about why I would likely buy one over the other. Now, just to make it clear, these monitors are identical physically. They share the same stand, the, the same actual shell that the panel goes in, the same menu system, the same options in that menu, the same I.O., literally everything. So the only difference here is the panel itself. But you'd be surprised at just how much of a difference that can be. Both are still 1440p or 2560 by 1440. Both run at basically the same refresh rate, 165 versus 170 hertz isn't exactly much. And both claim the same industry standard lie that is the one millisecond greater gray response time. Both also claim 400 nits of peak brightness and HDR400 certification. Now I'll start with one of the biggest differences, the contrast ratio and brightness. While I'm not 100% sure that AOC used the exact same backlight arrangement between the two models, in my testing I could only get the IPS model to run around 200 nits, with a pretty abysmal 0.29 nits uh, when the, the screen's meant to be black, you know, fully off, basically. That makes for a 690 to 1 contrast ratio, which is pretty poor, and means that anything that should be completely black is more like a dark grey. That also means, even if you did have 400 nits of peak brightness, and assuming uh, that, more, that more of that 400 nits didn't leak through, you know, when it, was, when it should be dark, which it definitely would, you would still only have just shy of a 1400 to 1 contrast ratio. By comparison, this VA panel did actually push out 400 nits, actually 462 nits, and at 462 nits only bled 0.14 nits of light on black. That gives a 3310 to 1 contrast ratio, and that's still not absolutely amazing for a VA panel. You regularly find VA panels with 4,000 to 1 contrast ratios or better, but it's still worlds better than the IPS model. It's actually about five times better overall, and while it's still no OLED, it will give a much better viewing experience overall for slower, slower moving content like films, TVs, and YouTube videos. Which brings me nicely onto the other major difference, the response times. This is the complete opposite of the contrast, where the IPS panel is considerably better than the VA panel. Of course, this data was collected using my open source response time tool, specifically the new Pro model, which you can pick up at osrtd.com. I'll put a link to that in the description, and I'll also put up the response time heat maps side by side here, as neither of them have bad overshoots on the medium overdrive mode, and you can see the differences. Just look at the averages alone. The IPS panel averaged 5 milliseconds on the initial time, whereas the VA was near on 8 milliseconds. That is a substantial difference, enough to take the results from generally inside the refresh rate window to definitely at least some ghosting. What's worse though is how sluggish VA panels are to get from full black to basically anything else. Looking at the top row of the VA panel's results, you can see just how painfully slow it can be. In fact, none of those results in that row are faster than the absolute slowest result from the IPS panel fully. That's kind of insane, and that manifests as a noticeable amount of smearing in fast motion, which if we look at some high speed footage, confirms that. 
The IPS panel is pretty much done drawing the newest frame by the time the next refresh rate cycle comes around and you know the next frame starts being drawn. The VA though, well that just isn't. With the central row leaving two or three pre previous frames on screen at once, and the darker line at the top showing more like four. The difference is pretty night and day, even while just actually playing games rather than looking at data or high speed footage. The IPS panel feels smooth and responsive, decidedly crisp, and feels like a good fit for faster paced games. Sure, it's not a TN or an OLED, so it's not a sort of actual competitive esports panel, but it isn't too far off. But compare that to a VA, which, well, just feels blurry during motion. It feels almost jelly-like when flicking around in CSGO, which makes for a slightly uncomfortable experience. Of course, in a slower paced game, something like Cyberpunk, the VA panel might actually be better thanks to the deeper blacks giving a, a more cinematic look, but in motion, the IPS is considerably better. It's also worth noting that in competitive games, having a low contrast ratio might actually be a good thing, as it means that enemies can't hide in dark areas quite as easily. The final catch with these monitors is their price tags. The VA option, the QXN, is just £270 right now on Amazon, whereas the IPS model, the QX, is a whopping £400 instead. That is, well, definitely enough of a discount to give you some pause before hitting that buy button. Now, personally, I would still opt for an IPS panel for my gaming monitor, although as I mentioned in my full review of the QX, I would likely get a cheaper option, like the Gigabyte M27Q, which is about £320 right now, and so, and actually a little bit better as well, so overall I think that would be what takes my cash. If you don't play as many competitive games and would prefer to see any amount of dark shades rather than a, just a wash of grey, then the VA panel might be better for you, but like I said, if you're a more competitive gamer, if you play faster paced games, then I think the IPS one is a, is a better choice. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the, the difference between the QX and QXN? Out of those two, which should you pick? And would you pick one of them or pick something else instead? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Also, if you want to check out either of the monitors, I will leave some global Amazon affiliate links to them in the description that you can check out. If you want to see more videos like this one, then first of all, you can check out the absolute load of them already on the channel, including plenty more monitor reviews. Uh, I'll leave those in the end cards. You can also hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can support the channel through YouTube itself, becoming a YouTube member, jump on Patreon instead if you'd rather, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of the designs that I made myself, or some of the other affiliate links that are in the description. Don't cost you anything to use, but help me massively when you do use them. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.